Hey, what's up? Zach here, and today I have got the serious player only player ones. Um, I wanted to do a live review on these just because uh, there is a lot going on with these shoes, uh, especially in kind of the design perspective of these and who they're meant for, who they're not meant for, uh, why they exist, and uh, just some of the... I think just some of the nuances of them, just because there has been quite a bit talked about in these shoes, especially other sneaker review channels I watch, like Sammy over at Soul Drop, uh, and then Wear Testers. So a lot of people have been talking about these, and especially for people that are, uh, we'll say, better basketball players than I am, uh, that have been getting very good reviews, and I just kind of want to come at them from just kind of a more like sports medicine perspective. Uh, so... Anyway, I just uh, I'm gonna go through this first, and then we'll do Q and A's with them as well, and uh, kind of get into that there. I just want to make sure that I'm starting this off. Okay. All right. So uh, number one, I want to talk about the uppers of the serious player. Only one is I just here. And by the way, this stream is sponsored by Power Step. Specifically today, the Bridge, the Pulse, and the Power Step work orthotic i'll be getting into these a little bit later but they're all ones that kind of remind me of the drop in midsole of the serious player only one and so you want to stick around with these because when i do uh, my second uh, kind of call out with power step we'll be doing some other fun stuff as well so make sure you stick around thank you to power step so much for sponsoring this i have them back here uh, with my discount code if you want to check them out like i said we'll check out some of the pairs that i think really mimic the serious player only one drop in and then we'll kind of do some fun stuff from there okay so anyway i've got a pair of 11s i got a pair of 12s here they actually sent me a pair of 12s to begin with that i was swimming in um so i had to wait for them to send me the 11s as well so these were provided to me from serious player only is not sponsored by them obviously it's sponsored by power stuff so uh uppers of the serious player only one now when people say you know they, they look at them and ironically i've got kobe's under here People say they kind of remind them of the like the fly net or whatever in the or the cables here in the Kobe's. However, when I see the uppers of the Serious Player Only One, the thing that I see here with the knit cables is I see the um, Adidas Prime X Strung. That's really what I that that's really what this reminds me of. I can get this thing to go live here. There we go. So it's always fun doing this live. But as you can see, it's textile mixed with TPU, more plastic pieces in the uppers. And it's a really tight weave in there. I mean, there's a ton of strands going through. It's not like some shoes where it's just a warp and a weft or, or you know, a strand going this way. And then maybe it's braided one way. You've got braids going in multiple different directions and then multiple levels of braids. So it's like a three, four layer deep uh, weaving up there. Plus, like the Primex Strung with Adidas, let me stop my screen share. Here. Like the Primex Strung with Adidas, it's also kind of flattened or almost like waxed onto the shoe. So you're getting like a lot of containment for a very, very low profile type upper. As you can see, there's really no foxing except back here where the TPU stabilizer here, the outrigger heel counter goes, and then some of the leather up here. But what what's nice about these is is in the running space we can get away with this a lot more because you're just going front to back right whereas on basketball shoes a lot of times you need serious foxing or stabilizing elements on the shoe and so with the serious player only they kind of took the primex strung um route or like the the strung type route where you know, as you can see right here, especially, see where all these fibers start to cross? That's not just because that's, you know, how the machine goes. It's because in these pivot points right here, you need multiple angles of support because that's where the shoe is going to want to bend most. So that's why you have all these crisscrossing right here. It's the same in the Primex Strung. If you look at any strung tennis shoe, or any strung tennis shoe, any strung running shoe, you'll see right where your foot's going to deform the most. That's where all the braids will start to crisscross. And so that's why I kind of wanted to do this review live because this was one of the biggest things. It just takes a while to explain why they do it. Now, Kobe's will do this like the old Kobe's would do this. And some basketball shoes are having to do this. But the serious player, the player one, I should say, is the one I've noticed it's been the most breathable 
the most kind of airy that's done this and the one that's really gone after that uber minimalist upper while trying to keep it contained enough for basketball. And I think when we get to the playability section, I think that's where this is going to uh, really delineate who wants these and who will not. So if you look at the breathability test on these, I don't have the, the picture of them, but it was 133.5 heat and then 68.6 degrees of cooling. What was interesting though was when I was heating these up, it was just fanning out the whole shoe immediately. Usually on a lot of shoes, it'll take a while. Like the uppers will be cool to the touch and they'll start getting warm. And you'll start to like almost feel radiant heat. Whereas these, the, the heat was just literally blowing out of all of them. And that, I mean, you can see they're kind of translucent going through here. So there is just a lot of room for breathing. The tongue is actually decently padded. I mean, there it's, it's not the thickest thing out there, but it has a lot of breathing channels, a lot of air holes in there for breathing. So in terms of something that's going to allow like a pretty light feeling shoe, even though they are super light, what are they like 12.8 ounces, um, a super like well breathing shoe and well ventilated shoe, even though, like I said, it is a more big midsole drop in and sometimes those shoes can on to heat. These really do not. Uh, so when we get into the rear foot, like I said, this is an outrigger heel counter, which is nice. Honestly, I didn't really feel it much because the shoe was so such a low top. And so, um, but really, you need that. It's the same as on the Way of Wade 808 to Ultra V2, um, where they have the carbon fiber in the heel. You really need, when, it, when the shoe is this low and when it's a drop-in, you really do need an outrigger stabilizer just because if not, because the because the midsole isn't glued and sewn into the shoe, there's not really anything holding the heel counter. So anytime you get a drop-in shoe, you really should look for a shoe that does have some sort of outrigger stabilizer. If not, the weight of your foot, even if you are a super lightweight player, the weight of your foot is still going to push through. Remember, in basketball, a lot of times you're putting at least three times your body weight of force into the shoe. So if you're me, that's a ton of force. Uh, so... Uh... No, this is the first, but the, remember, this is the series player only, player one, but now they're starting to introduce new drop-in midsoles. So, anyway, and like I said, the first and second version, there's not a huge difference. The biggest difference is where series player only is coming down with the drop-ins, because the new drop-ins have a lateral stabilizer. They have TPU in them just to stabilize the drop-in. So, all right, let's get into the very anticlimactic teardown I literally just put this back in like two minutes ago i'm gonna struggle with this one more than i do the ones i actually have to cut open with a knife there we go all right so now like i said on the new drop-ins there is a tpu bar that goes out here for more lateral containment which is nice especially being with a drop-in combined with the carbon fiber shank which is part of the uh, regular shoe and i'll show you that in a minute um but so suffice to say so this is evan lawn or eva and lawn or evan lawn whatever you want to call it but it's it just it's eva and then on the bottom though you have more of like a expanded plastic bubble type foam so boost um boom foam it, it's not really like boom foam but expanded thermoplastic bubbles and then you have these two dots, one are right under the heel, and then a gel pad here under the big toe joint. That is very similar to ASICS gel, which is a super critical gel, which means that it starts as a gel, they mold it, and then when the heat comes down to a certain level, they can get it into like a semi-solid state, they call it basically. But it's basically, if you look at any of my ASICS teardowns, it's the same thing, almost the same thing, but same idea as a6 gel would be so it's just a really forgiving kind of gel pad um, right where you crash on your heel or right under the forefoot now this technically is a three layer midsole except for like i said the majority of it what you're really feeling is is eva now what i like about these is on some drop-ins, you get some lateral containment here on the lateral side in the forefoot, whereas on this one, it goes all the way around. It's a little bit of a deeper cup than some of the other drop-ins, especially like on the Nike GT line. Um, it, it reminds me more like the Way of Wades uh, with the with a drop-in. But what you want to do is with this drop-in, you want to make sure that you're getting the shoe one-to-one, -one, so you really do not want to be going up sizes. Now, the shoe can feel a little narrow, 
number one, because of the rails of the drop in. And that's going to be even more pronounced in the second versions of the shoe because now there's TPU on the lateral. So it's plastic on the lateral side. So if you're a super wide footer, I, I, at least it was me. I'm, I'm still going true to size. I don't want to go up size in these because they're already so low cut and that's a drop in midsole. So you're going to have a little bit of a break in time with them. Now, the good part is, is I'll show you with the, the shell of the shoe is, is super forgiving. So it, you'll, you'll break it in. It's just, it, you're going to have some, a little bit of cramping if you've got lumps and bumps on the lateral side of your foot. Anyway, now if you look at, I have the, I have the bounce height test on here. Let me just make sure I can get it going. Oh, of course. There we go. Okay. And let me screen share. Okay. All right, so bounce height test. Got 33 centimeters in the heel. Earth, I'm sorry. Sorry, I got 38 centimeters in the heel. I just spoiler alert of the forefoot and then i got 30 so 38 in the heel 33 in the forefoot which i found kind of interesting because i would have thought the forefoot usually the forefoot gets a little bit better because it's closer to the concrete and so the ball you know it's just a little more tension so the ball bounces however on these i think it's because in the heel i got it right on the gel which the gel always um the gel will always let me get the screen tracker for the third time the gel will always be a little bit bouncier than an eva or even the thermoplastic just because it's it's just super spongy and springy whereas i think when i got it on the forefoot i think the ball hit right around here uh, so that's why now combined it was 35 no so average it was 35 35.5 centimeters and then so the speed ratio on these was 2.75 which was really high and i'll go through the universal rating system here in a second um So, sorry, spam in there. Um, anyway, so that's why this was getting, I think, a, a little bit less. But I think, really, if you're hitting it in the right areas or if you're lifting off under your, like, if you're actually pushing off the way you should, you're probably going to get the same amount of bounce on both these. But anyway, speed ratio, 2.75. Now, underneath of that, there's even more. And that is just this little layer of, it, it, it's kind of the, feels like the same as boost foam would, except it's a little bit more, I don't know if you can hear that ASMR here, um, but it's just a little bit more springy. It almost feels like a combination of the Pocorn or the Pocon or whatever they call this, but the thermoplastic plus the gel. It kind of feels like both of them combined. So it is, it's, it's almost like we're like a yoga mat, but with like some spring to it. Uh, and so I honestly, because it's so flimsy, I didn't really feel feel it that much to be honest under my foot like I took it out and and hit around or shot around with it a little bit and then I put it back in and shot around a little bit I didn't notice a huge difference there was a little bit more I'd say just forgiveness coming down like my knee didn't feel as bad I would say because I've been going through crazy jumpers knee actually it's getting a lot better now because I'm resting it and treating it but um so it didn't feel as bad but in terms of performance um, I think you're going to have to wait and use them for maybe like six months and see how much it bottoms uh, because, like I said, it is a very thin pad. Although, usually this real elastic stuff does last pretty long. So, next thing I want to show is um, kind of the outsole, but the outsole combined with everything else. So, the outsole attached to the uppers and because I think that makes a little bit of a bigger difference uh, versus just a standard outsole on some other shoes, even some drop-in shoes. Now, if you look, I can just push this shoe everywhere, right? I mean, it is just like nothing. Now there's carbon fiber in the middle, which is great. And that holds up the drop-in and that keeps your arch pretty stable. So that stops that real bad arch strain that you get on a basketball court, especially if you're someone that's prone to arch strain or you're someone that has a really high arched foot or a flexible high arched foot, um, that'll help. But what I noticed at first was just how um, was just how flexible the heel was and how thin the rubber was in the heel. Now, that's a good thing for grip, especially on indoor courts, carpet, and rubberized, because it is like a herringbone with basically um, 
nubs. So that's like these really, it's almost like a, a tennis shoe, like a grass court tennis shoe. So it has herringbone, but it also has all these nubs on it. And that's all well and good. It's just that with how thin the tread is, durability, even on an indoor court, is not going to be the greatest. Um, so, you know, the I, what I noticed was is when I was playing on indoor courts, I was even starting, and I wasn't playing that hard. I mean, I was, you know, like I said, I've got patellar tendonitis, so I wasn't really doing much. And I'm all, I was already starting to wear down a little bit of the rubber here on the outside. Now, that's also because I have a very high arch, and I'm not wearing orthotics in these. Remember, you can't wear orthotics in a drop-in midsole shoe. So um, w with these, is I was kind of, you know, I supinate a lot of my shoes. So I always wear down the lateral side, always, any shoe I ever wear unless I'm wearing orthotics in them. Uh, so performance wise, you're going to get tremendous, but especially me, remember I'm clunky with my footwork and I'm overweight. So I'm going to abnormally wear rubber down more than someone who is the best fit for these shoes, which we'll get to in the playability section. So I like the tread. I especially like the air channel going through here. I think this is really perfectly kind of ergonomic to the shoe. I think this was very well designed here, the bend point. But the lateral flange is really nice and fat here with rubber. And I like how the rubber goes up over the lateral side of the shoe. That does help contain the drop-in, which is really nice. Uh, but like I said, durability-wise, kind of like the Adidas Tray Unlimited. You know, you don't even like really need to do the durability test because you can, you can kind of see that the rubber is very soft. Like I said, for the right person, it's going to be awesome. Just don't even think about taking them on outdoor courts, put it that way. Now, getting into the fit, like we talked about, with the cup of the drop-in, as well as, I think even more importantly than the drop-in, but it's the low top. You have to get these as a one-to-one. -one. Now, they fit a little narrow in the midfoot more than anything. I mean, they're they're midfoot narrow. Their forefoot, I actually thought, was pretty forgiving after, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of putting them on. I actually didn't see a huge issue. Uh, so, I... You know, but narrow foot, medium foot, you know, if you're narrow and you want like a real performance fit, you don't have a long foot, you could consider going down a half size to get a better lockdown. Medium 2E, true to size, a 4E, I don't know. I, I would honestly, I'd probably try to get them. I'd, I mean, you can try to go up a half size if they have them in the half size up, but it just might not be the the best thing for you. If you are a 4 and want to go up a half size, a trick I've always learned is you can put moleskin, and I'll, I'll do a short on this. I'll, I'll do a tutorial. But you can put moleskin, um, like thicker pads of moleskin, like a, like a metatarsal pad or a metatarsal cookie pad. Look it up on Amazon. I'll leave it in the description um, after the stream's done. But you cut out two circles. You put them on both sides of your Achilles tendon, and that'll suck the rear foot of the shoe around your Achilles better. If you're a super wide foot, um, I do that with some of my shoes because I, I have a 2E. And so I'll put two pads on both sides and that'll just give me a little bit better lockdown. And then you can also put the, um, you can also put a cookie underneath of your tongue of the shoe and that'll cinch you down if you're a 4E and want to go up that half size. But honestly, going up one whole size on these, like I said, if you're a 4E, you can just get ready to start augmenting the shoe and start messing with the shoe in, in the in the heel counter and in the ankle collar because you're, you're going to need to because you're you're not going to get the lockdown that these shoes are meant to give you remember these are meant to be a certain type of shoe for a certain very serious player um in terms of heel pain or ball of foot pain remember any any well built drop in not not a not a eh, drop in but a very well built drop in like these are are going to feel really good while they are new now remember most of this is just eva so it will start to bottom over time but with these which is nice i think like 20 25 bucks to get a new one so as long as you're not burning through the shoe then you should be able to, and as long as, like I said, you're playing on indoor courts and you're the right player for them, then you can just re be replacing the drop-ins. And it's like getting a brand new custom orthotics or custom orthotic every time because this will start to mold. Remember, after, I don't know, five, six days of playing them, it'll start to mold you and you'll have that intermediate time where it feels amazing and then it starts to bottom. So that's, a, that's another reason why I really like it because it's not really like a money grab. You know, they're, they're trying to sell you 
piecemeal parts and not have to have you buy a whole new shoe, which I, I do really like. I think that is something needed in the space. Now, remember, on a traditional shoe, if you just want to buy a traditional basketball shoe, you can just keep getting orthotics like today with the sponsor of this video, Power Step, even though it says Dr. Hoist. Um, and what I like about like a custom or an over-the-counter orthotic, just like Power Step, is when you put it into a regular shoe, not something that you can get a replaceable drop in like these, but when you put these in, they'll stress shield the midsole, and so you won't bottom your midsole out as fast. That's why a lot of people will wear orthotics in their shoes, not necessarily because they have pain, but just to shield the midsole of the shoe. And like with these, with the Power Step Bridge, they have some of the same properties as this foam, is this like elastic Peba TPU mixture foam here. It's in the bridge. It's this crazy expanded elastic bubbles on these. So this will feel like that underfoot, but because it's got a rigid shell, it'll last a lot longer. Plus it's got this little memory. It's got a little moisture waking up here and it's got the, like antibacterial uppers same with the work orthotics if you want antibacterial get the power step work orthotics but that's why i really i mean i've been really liking the bridges recently like i know like the pinnacles are kind of the ones that i always talk about in my live streams and on my videos because they have the best broad arch support i mean if you've watched this channel you've heard me say this before they have the best broad and wide arch supports so they capture all of your arch versus even some custom orthotics and that's why i really like things like the pulse or the pinnacles like the pinnacle work that has a little bit more cushion in it but with the bridges recently i've been liking them just for everyday kick around shoes that i want to feel a little bit more lively a little bit more springy or a shoe maybe like the way of weight like the sun of flash which is a little bit more unforgiving of a shoe you put something like the bridge in there with all this elastic foam under there which just feels so good underfoot it makes you feel like just really lively so especially if you're in a shoe that's a little bit more tightly tuned a little less forgiving that's where I go with something like the bridge. If you're in a shoe that's maybe a little bit more flimsy, maybe a little bit softer, almost like the React foam in the PG6, then you throw something like the Power Step Pinnacle or like in these ones, the Power Step Work Orthotic that has the antibacterial coating as well as the extra, um, extra cushioned, mid, almost like midsole of the orthotic. So anyway, thank you to Power Step for sponsoring this. And that was a good segue into the playability of serious player only one i'll take one question before i do that uh is the jt one the tatum one yeah if, as long as you have very good nimble footwork on the balls of your foot and you do not produce a lot of heat in the rear foot yes i do trent thank you i do have a review on this what is the tan shoe in the title of the video the exact shoe we're reviewing the serious player only one okay uh, actually, I just want to add this to the broadcast here about 4E. So 4E person, please just get an ASIC soup shoe. They have a wide options for their basketball shoe. Nice. And then my feet are extra wide. I got an ASICs gel burst 25 wide. They went true to size felt great. Yeah, ASICs, even in the tennis space, a lot of times their regular shoes run a, not narrow, but unforgiving medium i would say but now they're starting to make a6 tennis 2e and they're like the best fitting 2e's out there because they still have like the streamlined fit of an a6 but wider in the forefoot the wider last so I, I definitely agree especially in the in the tennis space the gel resolution eight wide the gel resolution nine wide in tennis is awesome and i do have a, a person who i talk to at a6 he's one of their north american reps uh, he's the one that was able to hook me up with all the a6 tennis shoes and i'm thinking i'm trying to get him to send me like all their basketball because it's tough to get them in the states as long as you pay crazy like tariffs on them to get them in the states but i love to review them especially the basketball and their volleyball shoes i think they're kind of interchangeable and i think if you're the right person that'd be good okay david i'm so glad you asked what are thought i should recommend for flat feet so if you have way like crazy over pronation so you see here it's all about the arch um the Power Step Pinnacles are my favorite. Now, if you want max cushion, the Power Step Pinnacle work is really good because it's got the extra, see this yellow, extra layer of yellow cushion. Um, but, or you can go with, I don't even know if I have them below me, or you can go with the standard Power Step Pinnacle. Uh, and that's what's behind me right here. So if you go check my link in the description, use the code FootDoctorZach15, you will get 15% off. But if you're looking for max cushion, power step pinnacle work, if you're looking for just kind of like more like streamlined, easier to fit in the shoe, then just power step pinnacle. Okay. 
and let's get on with the playability uh sorry of the serious player only one all right so serious player only one in terms of the playability i think number one you can't be a like you can't be nikola jokic or jokic you can't be lebron you can't be me <laughs> like you shouldn't be a very heavy player because of the low 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 ankle collar and the low top design of the shoe it's not just the heel counter that's low i mean the ankle collar is really low and broad like a lot of times people like shoe companies will make ankle collars that go low for more freedom in your ankle but then it, it juts back up into the lace line and then the heel counter and these it's it's really kind of level right it's like a level horizon on the shoe and so number one you probably should be a little bit of a lighter player um I, I don't know in terms of pounds everyone always asks me like what's light and what's heavy i always go with like what we go with with orthotics in terms of when we like when i make a custom orthotic for my patients right if there's someone that's like over 185 and they're not real tall like it, it depends like if you're tall and you're dispersing that weight out a little more and get away with it but i'd say anywhere north of 185 in terms of pounds i consider it being a little bit of a heavier player under 185 that's a lighter player anywhere between that like 175 to 190 range is kind of like mid right if you're the right body type have the right physicality then you can pretty much play in any shoe you want right you can go uber maximalist like lebron 19 you can go uber minimalist like the serious player only one so that's kind of where i see heavy and lightweight players go so um and that's why like in the nba right you see all of them playing with orthotics because they need the extra support even on that shoe because those frames that they carry are so large that they need the orthotic too to assist the shoe almost right and that's why you see a lot of players with carbon fiber in their shoes because they need a little bit more oomph to hold them up even though i like you know thermopolyurethane a little bit better or polypropylene sometimes like in an orthotic it just it bottoms a little bit more so like with carbon fiber you can get that really good support but then they're getting new shoes over and over and over again so they don't have to worry about the carbon fiber cracking right whereas like with polypropylene or thermopolyurethane you don't have to worry about it cracking it'll just slowly start to bend um all right so i think obviously they're best for a wing point guard smaller shooting guards if you're a power forward or a small forward, I mean, if you're a small forward that kind of is more of a wing, then I think they're great. They're fine. Center, power forward, I, I think you just might pound through them a little bit too much or you might introduce a little bit more rotation in the shoe than you would need. Now, like I said, if you're someone that's very, like, more nimble power forward, maybe, like, someone that's playing center or something, I just I don't know if you're going to get the containment that you would need out of them. Um and then in terms of like what they're best for, I, remember most drop-ins are not the most springy shoes off the ground. Now these have carbon fiber, so it is a stiffer setup, but where the carbon fiber ends, the shoe is now super bendy, right? So you're not getting the rigid beam to push up off from. Now, if you're somebody like, if, if you're someone that it's very nimble, on your feet and someone that can create your own vertical someone that is very good at creating space very well balanced someone that likes to kind of create weird jellies around the hoop then yeah these are fine because they'll give you so many degrees of freedom to pretty much do whatever you want and the grip that you'll be able to do pretty much whatever you want to so i would say they are for a very nimble player not necessarily a very large one or one that just wants to get up and dunk or get offensive boards or you know play defense basically as their name would suggest, they are meant for a more advanced player. I found they were great for shoot around for me, someone who is not a very advanced player, like everyone reminds me of in the comment section of my videos. I liked them though for when I was, because when I was playing in these, I was not doing a lot of, I was not trying a lot of things in these. I was more just doing shoot around. And then at the end, when I was very warmed up, that's when I kind of went a little bit more full go. But I noticed with shoot around, just doing little easy things here. They were so forgiving. So if you are looking for like the most comfortable shoot around shoe, 
I think they're fantastic. If you want a shoe like just to almost like a recovery shoe almost, I think they're really good in terms of you're going out on a Saturday morning and you want to hit, you know, a hundred free throws or you want to do like a hundred turnaround jumpers over. They're great. Keep them for that. If you're a more advanced player and looking for a ton of freedom in your shoe, especially because they are so light and you're someone that has very strong, especially you know, super strong uh, perineal tendons, strong posterior tibial tendons, it's very, I'd say a very limber plantar fascia, then they're going to give you more playability than pretty much anything else out there because they are so light. They're like the way of weight 808, but lighter, you know, they're a little bit more forgiving. Um, they, they're definitely a niche shoe in the market. Like, like I say, if you're going to, if you're playing like, you know, in your men's league or your women's league at 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning at your local gym, you better have been, you know, starting point guard for your division three or division two team, put it that way, to, to really extract the most out of these. Uh, if you're someone with instability or things like that, I just, I just, I don't think they, they work. But if you're someone that like wants all that freedom and wants all that creativity, yeah, for sure, they're great. And like I said, in terms of just something to shoot around in or something for recovery or just for, you know, kind of working out on your own, then I think you're, they're going to feel amazing because they're just so light and just easy to move around with. So um, I do think they serve quite a good place in the market and they, they definitely fit a niche in the market that's really only being filled right now by like kind of more like the 808, the JB1. Um, those are kind of like the three shoes in that market, except these are lighter and more breathable. So, um, but you know, that's the kind of thing. Now, speaking of shooting around and wearing these for shooting around, let me see here. Let me just check the chat. Okay, I do see. Hold on. Josh, I do see you in here. There we go. All right. So Joshua is a member of the membership. So you are the first member I saw in here. So I have a size 11 and a size 12. I'm going to do two giveaways. All right, Josh, if you are one of these two sizes, let me know in the comments and they are yours since you've been one of my first members. The other one I'm going to give away in this stream. So we're doing two giveaways. Uh, you were the first member I saw in the chat and in the membership group, everybody will get a chance at one. I know there's some pickleballers or some tennis players and there's some basketball players in the membership group. So Josh, you don't want these ones. You can do another drawing later down the road. Um, or if you're not in the chat, I will put it in the membership, but I will save whichever one uh, is out. So I'm going to look for your chat here and then we'll get to whichever one you don't want. If you're still in here, um, I will give away the other one. So I got these both from serious player only. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't obviously don't need them because uh, I review shoes all the time and I'm not going to cut them open because they're drop-ins. There's not really much else to cut open. So I might as well give them away. And since everyone here has dealt with me for the last 33 minutes, you are the ones that are going to get a chance to win them. Um, I will be doing more giveaways on these sponsored live streams because Power Step sponsors them so that I can give them away. Uh, so thank you to Power Step for allowing me to do this as well as Flat Socks. Um, and maybe I'll give one of those away too later. So let me just check the chat here before I start giving stuff away. I wonder when he said that. Oh, yeah, not my size. Thanks. Let someone else enjoy them. You are the real MVP, Josh. And Josh, can you just drop in what your um, what your size is so that I know in the membership since you were nice enough to do that? Um, so... Uh, thanks to Josh, you get two chances, one size 11, one size 12. All right, so everybody knows how I do these um, giveaways. There's always some sort of string attached to them in terms of guessing games or puzzles or something. Um, but anyway, if you do want to join the membership group, you see all these videos early. The teardowns are extended from stem to stern. So you see the entire teardown process. Obviously, there are special giveaways for the membership group. When I get shoes in that are extras, different sizes, things like that, they always go to the members first. 
Um, and there's a thread in the membership group to put your shoe size and sport that you play. So if you do want to join the membership group, it is a lot of fun. Uh, I Like I said, all the videos come out early. The teardowns, the anti-GH4 teardown is already in the membership group. Um, and eventually I'm going to start going into past shoes and starting to get the old teardowns in there when I, when I finally get the time. Um, okay, cool. I'll put that in there. Um, so... Well, that was my train of thought. But anyway, I put all those teardowns in there ahead of time and it's extended uh, in terms of like there's commentary. So when you usually see my videos and I'm tearing the shoe down, in its, it's just ASMR basically. In between there, I'm talking to the members and doing the teardown and like all the stats and everything early so they can kind of see and make a buying decision first or just kind of get if it's like their favorite shoe or something they want to see, they can get it there. So if you want to join the membership group, it is in the description below. And like I said, we are doing kind of it's not all, it's not every day, obviously we're doing giveaways, but when I get them in, um, I have that list to go down and then people start getting them. So, and then let me make sure there's no other, uh, members in here that are here. Cause if they are that size, I'm just going to give it to them first. Okay. Let's do our first giveaway. So why don't, which one are these? All right, let's do the U S 12 version first. All right, so to win this, since I have not done the universal rating system on these yet, uh, let's go with what is the total universal rating of the series player only one, your guess. Remember, that's out of 40. Each category is out of five points. Containment, bounce, shock, speed, durability, comfort, support, and playability. So what is the final urs whichever whoever gets closest to it or gets it sooner whoever i say whoever gets it um will win the shoes um so like i said it's out of 40 and i will check the chat and i will start uh i will start answering some questions while everybody gets those in trying to look in the past year i'm a size 12 let me try them out well guess the universal rating and we'll go from there and i'm gonna let everyone which shoes do you recommend for someone with really wide and flat feet? My feet are about a 4E to 5E. Oof. Uh, and I currently own the Harden Volume 7. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it, most Adidas, like the um, Adazero Selects are really good. The 7s. The AG3 from 361 is good because it's so big in length and width that it'll fit you, but it's heavier. Um, but my one of my favorite shoes out there is the Harden Volume 7. So, whoa, okay. People are starting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Let's see. Close, but no cigar yet. Ah, 30. Ding, 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 ding. You have just won the serious player. Only one player one. Um, since I don't even know how to pronounce that screen name, can you make sure you DM me on Instagram? right now uh if you put you can you put your instagram handle in the chat and then dm me that way i know it's you and uh, i can get your address and i will send them off i they're not going to get sent until probably a week from today because uh i'm gonna be i'm just not gonna be able to um so let me know where you where your uh your instagram handle is dm me on instagram and then i will Send them over to you. All right, that's the size 12s. And then let me take a picture of this for the 12. Photo. Okay, just so I remind myself. Okay, oh, yes, congratulations. But there's still another one to give away. Now, full disclosure, these were worn twice but for no more than like I don't know, 10 minutes each um, just because like I said I was not doing so with my patellar tendon so they were not um, they were not yeah okay let me take a picture of that okay yes you yes you all right Pedro I will answer this question as soon as I think of <laughs> A good trivia question for the serious player only one. Okay. 
let's do something. I don't know. Do we want to do? Do we want to do a? Let's do an exact one because it's a little easier to. Um, it's a little easier for me to go and versus uh, versus getting closest to something. So let me just see here. I'm going to look something up real quick. And then we will. So the size that's coming up now that's going to be given away is a U.S. size 11. Let's see. Okay. All right. So uh, let me answer this question first. Hi, Zach. Quick question regarding tennis clay shoes and paddle shoes. Are they ever supposed to be as comfortable as something like a running shoe? No. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I mean, like if you get the Blue Shield Tornios, they're going to be super plush, right? Because they got Blue Shield in the forefoot. It's really forgiving. But they're not going to feel as cushy as Adidas Prime X, um, you know, Nike. Uh, um, I'm forgetting like the vapor flies they, they're never or zoom X foam. They're never going to feel as, as forgiving as that because the rails of the shoe have to have like TPU or foxing on them. So whereas running shoes can just feel uh, amazing because they're so minimalist. That's great. Whereas tennis shoes can't, um, they, they just have to, um, they, they, they have to have some more containment. The foam has to be a little bit harder or you'll just be spraying your ankle over the place. Okay. Let's go since, where is it? Let me look for it. I almost fell off my chair. That would have been embarrassing. All right. All right. Since this shoe hardly ever gets any play back here because I don't have my table anymore. This is Andy Roddick's Reebok Fig Jam. This is my favorite shoe of all time. Um, this was when I was in high school. It's like the first shoe I saw that like kept me up at night that I wanted so badly. I had like two pairs of these and I ended up throwing them away at one point. I don't know why I'm such an idiot, but I ended up gotten this pair. Um, but anyway, this is Andy Roddick's Reebok Fig Jam. As you can see, it has a USA logo on the back for the US Open. I want to know the year Andy Roddick won the U.S. Open and who he beat. First one in the chat will win a size 11 series player only. So I'm going to make you guys look up and, girl and ladies look up tennis stuff because I want to. So, all right, let's answer some questions while everybody gets in here. Um, yes, Ben. Yes, he is the best tennis player ever. Uh, yes, you are welcome, Pedro. All right, I'll answer some questions and um, see who came in first. And I don't know if it's like on my end, you might see it as you first and I see it as somebody else first, but hey, I'm, I'm not trying to screw anybody over. That's who I see first on there is who I pick. Um, hey, Zach, quick question. Of all the shoes you've reviewed this year, which are the top five basketball shoes? That is a great question because I just did the top five basketball shoe video and that will come out a little bit. Uh, maybe like anywhere between seven to ten days that will come out. Uh, but... Yeah, some good. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a different list this year, just because I, I took you know, um, some great. I mean, there's been so many good shoes. I mean, I could have done like top twenty, and that all be kind of the same, right? I mean, this year, especially even in the tennis space, usually in basketball, there's way more good shoes that come out than tennis. This year, basketball and tennis, there have been so many amazing shoes that have come out, and ones like the serious player only that are like super niche. You know, like for like one player, like one person gets it, they're going to find it like the best shoe ever. One other person's not going to like it very much. And I like that because remember, I've always said there's no best shoe. There's the best shoe for you. And there's so many now that fit so many different people. And I really like that. So, yeah, this was a very hard list to put together. Um, but I'm glad like I kept some shoes, kept using them throughout the year and tested them. I mean, I didn't put, make videos on it, but like I would, you know, take them out again and, and test them again. And, um, so yeah. Okay. Let's see who was. Nope. Close. Ferrero 2003. 
You are the winner, Sai. That's how I pronounce it. Size 11. Yeah, right? Size 11. Serious player only will be coming to you. Can you please DM or please put your Instagram handle in here? And then I will uh, send these off. So that was size 11. Okay, so make sure you put that in there because if I don't see it in here, I'm going to take the next person uh, just because I don't. I just want to make sure that. Uh, um, that someone gets them that I actually uh, were in here. And while you're waiting for that, I'll take some questions. What do I think of the LeBron next gens? I think they're great if you want the LeBron 20 with more containment, right? Like they're a little bit more of a mid, so you're not. Remember, LeBron 20. Do I have a LeBron 20 around here somewhere? I'm sorry, somewhere. Um, LeBron 20, I, I like the low in it, but there's no runners not. So if you're somebody that slips out of shoes really easily or something like a really, really high arch, which is more posterior high arch, you're going to slip out of them. Whereas in the next gens, you're getting a really similar setup. Not, I mean, it, it, it's not as sharp in the forefoot, the flange is sharp, but you're getting a very similar setup. Um, and, uh, and with a little more containment, I think they're a little cheaper too, right? All right, here we go. Photo. Okay. DM me over on Instagram with your address, and I will send that to you shortly. All right. Let's answer some questions, and then we'll go for there. What is Boom and Zoom like? Well, Boom is almost like Zoom X, but stiffer, and Zoom is Zoom Air. It's like having a bouncy house underneath of you. or It's not even really a bouncy house. It, it's more like a trampoline underneath of your foot. Trent, do I think the drop-in will work in other shoes like the Wave Weight? No, you know, I think it depends. Remember, the height has to be right, the width has to be right, and the length has to be right. Um, and you can try it. I, I just, I would always be scared to do it. Unless you're getting your drop-in made custom to you. Like, I, I mean... I, if you go on footdoctorsact.com, I actually have a, a like how you can make a drop in by like yourself, like take it to a, a physician and have them make it for you. I have a recipe for that. So, but unless it's custom to the shoe, it's going to be tough just because the last are all, they're always going to be a little bit different. And so, if the drop in doesn't fit perfectly in the shoe, you're hosed, absolutely hosed. Liam, what do I think is the best shoe for people who make hard and quick stops, people who put a lot of pressure on their knees? Um, pressure on your knees, probably the um, Way of Wade 10 or the Fission 8. The hard stops, I think, with the Fission 8 because that really crazy uh, lateral flange on them. Hi, Cadence. I just came onto the stream. Is the player one cushion eight shoes feel similar to it? The Way of Wade 808 feels pretty similar to it um without the heel slippage issue of the kd15 will be better than the kd14s no because i like the shape of the outsole and the shape of the last on the kd14 more here's the thing though the kd14 was a unicorn right it was like one of those shoes that just came along like everybody liked it you know and it just had just the right tools especially with the, the dorsal retention strap. I know people don't like those. I love dorsal retention straps. It was just high enough of a mid to give really good containment, really good lockdown. You know, the foam setup with the cushion on was so nice. The zoom, the shank was just stiff enough. But I think the last on them was the thing that made the KD-14 the best is that it was it was streamlined enough to where you could still pick up some speed or, you know, a power forward could use it. But also, like, a really super light guard, a really shifty guard could use it. And they almost, like, I mean, they they play almost like the serious player only one and how nimble they are. But then you get the, all the containment. So the, the KD-14, to me, is a unicorn of a shoe. I'm not sure you're going to see something like that for a while again where everything just came together on it. Like, if I mean, put it this way. If you like the KD-14, I would buy more KD-14s. I know they actually have them on Nike. If Just look in one of my descriptions for my Nike link. Um, and I think I have uh, some to the, and then that link will take you to some KD14s as well. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There's different shoes. Like, I mean, a lot of people will say that, you know, the Way of Wade 808, like what's been number one on my list, that was my last top five, is better. And yeah, I mean, like I said, the build quality is probably, you know, is really good. But like I said, in terms of just the most people that will like it, right? Like the, the largest swath of people, probably like the KD14, right? Like the 808 might be a little heavier, you know, more maximum stuff set up. The, the fit is a little more wide, whereas the KD14 was like perfectly down the middle, right? It was like just a, it was, it was wide enough to go one-to-one -one on a 2E, but a narrow foot could still use them really easily. So like I said, there is no one best shoe. The, the top fives are the ones that I think the largest amount of people will like. And ones that have done something really unique or interesting that I like throughout the year that I think the largest percentage of players will like. There are still going to be shoes that people, I mean, look at the Nike Precision 6 video I did, right? That's a $70 shoe. There are a ton of people in the comments that said, that is my favorite shoe ever. And there are some people in the comments that say, I hate that shoe. It's the worst shoe ever. Why? Because everyone's different, you know? So, okay, let me... Uh... Yes, I am in the house. And so I'm going to go Okay. Have I ever tried any other leaning shoes? No, I have not tried anything besides in leaning besides what? The JB1, the CJ1, is that a leaning shoe? Um, Famuji sneaker. I, I usually will ask them to send me something. Um, but maybe I should start doing, you know, different models of them. But usually I try to do signature shoes uh, just because they're you know, just more interest. You know, I, I like getting kind of into the psyche of the player who's playing in them and kind of like their foot shape and things like that. But yeah, I should try them. I, um, someone, uh, who's at Lord Volroy, whoever always comments on my videos always is wanting me to do the sharp edge. So maybe I should do that one. That'd be good. One. Uh, wanted to ask, hi, Greg. Uh, I just wanted to ask what it's a current good shoe. People have shin splints like me. Yeah, that's the worst. So anything that decreases the amount of shock on your legs, right? So something light enough that your anterior tibial tendon, which is the tendon right here, uh, doesn't have to lift. Because remember, that's what usually gives you shin splints is your anterior tibial tendon having to yank. So in terms of basketball shoes right now, the Way of Wade Fission 8 is really good because it has enough stability to it while not having to yank it up. Um, you know, the, the KD 14 is really good too with an orthotic. Uh, the KD 15 would be good for that with an orthotic. Um, just make sure you don't have any slippage issues. I actually have a short or maybe it's on Instagram that I have like how to prevent heel slippage in your shoes and how you can modify any shoe to make it not slip. So something that you got to get something that's not super heavy, but that has enough shock absorption that's not going to allow you to over pronate. Remember one of the better things to do for stopping that abnormal motion is to put an orthotic in there, especially a lighter orthotic. So like something like the bridge might just give you enough to, um, to stop that. But like I said, you know, tibialis anterior raises, um, are good for that too. But yeah, shin splints are the worst. I used to get shin splints. Um, I ended, I ended up working them out with anterior tibial raises and working on my just technique and working out my legs more. Okay. Yeah, it is hard to get KD14s. I know Nike Nike will will bring some out here and there. Like I said, ch click one of my Nike videos, go into the links that you can find them. Um they're just it has to be the right size. Okay. Let's see here. This is a great question. Axel. Like in uh what was that? What's that show that the kid's name is Axel? Um the middle. Uh, anyway, what features do you recommend for ankle sprains and basketball shoes? A very sharp and defined lateral flange usually a very flat tread profile so it doesn't undulate so like in the sp1 see how it's just completely flat down here see how it has a really stout lateral flange and then just something that connects like the lace line of the shoe down into the midsole and then something with a stiffer midsole setup so remember a stiff midsole setup will allow the shoe to stay centered to the ground while your foot moves over it right so it's going to resist that movement the lateral flange here or would all of you in the comments keep telling me to call an outrigger that this is an outrigger here this is lateral flange i mean it, it doesn't matter but anyway people just yell at me over that all the time but it doesn't matter anyway a lateral flange that's going to stop the shoe from wanting to completely roll and then, like I said, something that contains the lace line up to here, because remember the lace line is what contacts the dorsal side of your foot, 
right? And so that's what will stop that twisting. A mid or a high is not going to stop an ankle sprain. It does not matter. Some people think that the lower the shoe, the less chance an ankle sprain you get because you're going to be paying attention more. Same, that's like the same with like barefoot running, like where you literally are not wearing shoes at all or barefoot. You're you're going to avoid all the glass and the rocks on the road because you're paying attention more. Now, I wouldn't recommend go doing that, obviously, because I think that's nonsense uh, because on blacktop, a lot of times you can't see it. But anyway, that's that, that's the suggestion that a lot of times you get more biofeedback, not sprain your ankle. Uh, if you look at the Serena Williams signature shoe, her drop-in, the ankle collar is super flexible, but the shoe sits so low to the ground and it's so flat to the ground that that's how she stopped. And then the flange is really nice one, but that's like how she wanted to stop angle sprains. Quinn Stanley, she went to go, she like went to more maximal shoes after that as well. So um, I think it kind of, de- it kind of depends. Like if you're really confident in your footwork, then you're going to want something that allows more ground feel. So you can allow your own proprioceptors and nerves to do the work for you. Whereas if you're someone like me who just like broke their ankle a few months ago, then I'd want something with more containment, stiffer midsole foam underneath of me. Something like, you know, the way of Wade, 10 i know i keep saying that or like the harden volume 7 something just super stiff midsole setup what is the best orthotic for baseball cleats that is tough i actually had um just recently to make for soccer cleats or you know american football cleats or i'm sorry real football cleats but i've had real football american football and baseball so if you can get um something like the pulse where it's got a low ankle or it's got a low heel cup and you get them made to measure and you can use a over the counter. Otherwise you're probably going to need to get something razor thin custom made. That's usually how it goes. You can also get the power step pinnacle low and that'll fit really well into that because it's a much lower profile. And then you can always, you know, trim the forefoot to fit, which is, is a nice thing to do. Um, but other than that, other than getting like the low version or something that has a little less profile, you're probably going to want to go, like I said, I, um, I either take these and customize them for my patients or like either the, the pulse or the power step pinnacle low and I'll customize them for cleats or I'll make a truly custom, which I actually have a custom orthotic guide in the description. Um, and I'll make them so that they'll fit in the exact cleat with the sizes and everything. So that those are tough. Um, let's see. If I could make any combination of any shoe with technology from different shoes, would you put in? That's a good question. Um, well, I like Boost a lot in the heel. Um, I like, to be honest, I like React Foam a lot too. And then obviously Zoom. Um, but like the double shanks on the Fission 8 is like something I would really like. Um, or like full length, just really thin Peba or Pebex in a shoe. I don't know. I mean, I've always thought about like for Halloween doing like a Franken shoe. Maybe I'll start to think about that. Maybe I'll do like a Franken shoe episode. Okay. Hello from Ukraine. Hello to you. Uh, I really like your content and work. What do you think about the AJ Why Not Zero line of shoes and the point three SE model, the red face? So um, the Why Nots are all right. The latest Why Not the fours right the threes i wasn't a huge fan of the, the latest ones i think are amazing um much better than the lineup has been before the originals were good and they kind of took a vacation and now the latest line has just been with the zipper uh, is awesome why ever do any handball volleyball shoes so i mean most of the basketball shoes tennis shoes i use you know you can use on both i don't have a lot of experience with volleyball. The only thing I really have experience with volleyballers is, is treating their injuries. Um, and I don't have volleyball courts around to actually demonstrate the shoes or at least demonstrate to myself, like what I'm doing. And I don't want to put other people, like I don't want to introduce other people into the channel because then I have to go on their schedules and get like with wear testers, you can do it because there's a huge channel and they have so much content. Um, and there's such a wide reach that they can do that because they always have content about it. But for me, like if I want to get a video out on Monday, I want to get it out on Monday, right? And so if I have to find someone who's got a, access to a volleyball court, it's like one of those things. Um, so that being said, I would like to do some of the ASICs volleyballs and some of the Adidas volleyballs because they do really well for rubberized tennis as well as indoor pickleball. So I might start doing those. Um, 
but like it's not going to take it's not going to replace basketball tennis pickleball and running um so yes just once i get around it plus like my wife and i are like this close to opening the doors on our new building for the practice so like that's been like really um a lot uh, it's taken up a lot of my time um, getting that going but you can come do some medical tourism to columbus ohio and see me in person i have a basketball court at my uh, at my new uh place i'm also going to have a pickleball court at my new place and i'm going to have a treadmill a, a gait analysis machine slow motion camera i'm gonna have all that stuff it's going to be awesome like i took a lot of time to like save up to be able to build this place out the way i wanted it without having to go into like crazy amount of debt so, um, yeah, if you want to come over and hang out and get your foot tested, I will, uh, be, that'll be coming up soon. Put it that way. All right. I have time for just a couple more questions. Uh, my kid's birthday party is today. And if I don't get there on time, my wife, you do not want to get on her bad side. Uh, the Nick Flair <laughs> that is a great name. I, I swear, if you made T-shirts, I'd, I'd buy that. Uh, Zach, any draw on his opinion? What is the better shoe in general, the Way of Wade Ten or the Harden Volume Seven? That's the thing. There's no, one isn't better than the other. If you want a three-piece tongue, if you want a traditional tongue, the Way of Wade Ten. If you want a slipper tongue or a booty liner, then the Harden Volume Seven. You want a more traditional feel of a shoe, the Sevens. If you want more of like a, almost like a. I don't know. It's like the, the way of weight 10, like creates its own environment almost. So, you know, the way of weight 10 is a little more forgiving, a little more bulbous. Um, and it's a little bit like, I don't know. They're, they're so similar. That's the thing. I, um, I, I probably am just going to make a whole video on this. Cause I'm, I had to like put one on each foot and like really evaluate, but it really comes down to, do you want the slipper tongue or do you want the, the three piece tongue? Yeah. And, so, I mean, here's some people with their opinions. Hudson, do I think the Nike GP Turbo, yes, is still a top-tier performer? Yes. 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 Um, go on my shorts tab. Watch the short that says how to size between men and women's shoes. The, 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 the picture is actually that of the GP Turbo. I actually have links to where you can still buy the GP Turbo for retail. Go click those links and... If you like them, get them because they're they're still being sold. The men's and women's shoe is on the exact same last. They're just all white, so it doesn't really matter. I think the other ones are like a floral, which is like really cool. Like I'm actually thinking about buying the new Osaka's. I think they're like a floral pattern. They're really cool. But remember, the turbos are it's the same last. So just size up one and a half for men. So go watch that short. Click the link I have because that'll take you right to the page where there's still a ton of sizes available. So go on my shorts tab and um, click the link down there. It's an affiliate link, but really matter but anyway uh, it will take you directly to the page they still have all of them for sizes um i like i bought another pair of them because i still want them and i just bought the women's um so if not what are the alternatives there are there are none that's the thing that's that's it like that and the kd14 but you can't find the kd14 either is the pulse insole the performance power step it's the power step with a little bit of a lower heel cup. So it fits into shoes that have more heel slippage issues and it has more, it's like, it has the cushion of the work, but it has the heel, it has the lower heel cup for shoes with lower heels. Um, but the pulse is, it, it's the same as the pinnacle with low, with a lower heel cup. Um, so if you want like the, the Uber performance one from power step is the power step pinnacle. And then all the other ones are variations of the pinnacle, right? So yes, the pulse and the work and the wool are all pinnacles and the breeze, they're all pinnacle orthotics. They just have different bells and whistles on them for different shoes. The bridge is more of like the lively, like comfort feeling ones underfoot for stiffer shoes. And then there's other ones as well, the lows and the highs. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's the performance one. Yeah. Okay. If I mostly played basketball, I wanted to incorporate more road running. What's a good shoe that you try to for that? Oh, so my favorites, cause that's me, right? I played mostly tennis and basketball, pickleball, and I just run when I want to get a quick workout and I want to like introduce it. My favorite is the New Balance 840 or the New Balance More Trail V2 or the More Balance More or the New Balance More V4. Those are my ultimate favorite. The Asics 
Super Blast, the ones I just reviewed as well, are amazing options for that. And then the Nike... Oh my god, what is it? Hold on. <laughs> um, hold on, which one is it? I gotta find it. I'm gonna. It's gonna drive me nuts. I've reviewed so many shoes in the last few months. Yeah, the Asics Super Blast, and then... The Nike, I'm like, I'm just going down my videos. Um, hold on. I want to leave the stream. <laughs> Seems almost, oh my God, how many videos have I done? It's amazing, like, how many shoes I have on different shoes. Okay, the Nike Zoom Fly 5. That's kind of, those are the ones I think are kind of the better ones for that. Okay. Josh, does a does Adidas ever bring back popular shoes like Nike's then with the Air Zoom Vapor 9.5? They so Josh, they did bring the Soul Court Boost back. Sorry, I, I saw your question on here we go. Yeah, so Adidas brought back the Soul Court Boost for all, then they took it back. They brought back the Adidas Barricade 18, like two years ago, then they took it away when the new barricades came out. So they do not to the level that Nike does. So, all right, it is 10:05. I gotta get going here. So, everybody, thank you very much uh, for hanging out on this stream with me. And uh, to the people that won the shoes, congratulations! Like I said, other giveaways will be in the membership groups. If you want to hang out, see videos early, the teardowns kind of have more extended length conversations in there, and get your questions always priority answered in the comment section of the videos. Like I said, I always do priority with them. Those are the first people I filter through, get their questions asked, and everybody else. Um, Join the membership down below. It's a lot of fun. And then, like I said, I'll be trying to do other giveaways there. And then the next live stream, hopefully I have some other shoes to give away for the people that did not win on this one. So thank you very much. Respect your rubber and foam. And I will see you in the next video, which will be top five clay shoes for the French Open. And then the Anta GH4. And then a special tennis collab and basketball collab shoe. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. See you in the next one.